Uh, beautiful. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, hang out with our, our YouTube people. They're just joining us. Uh, hello to you. We are just putting the finishing touches on getting the show started. Bear with us a couple minutes. We'll let some folks uh, jump in. Making sure uh, our top fan gets tuned in. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll also uh, we'll have Dave do an audio check like he always does to make sure that everybody can hear us. Um, hey, look at that. I heard myself on the there you go. through sideways over there. That's good. All right. Marcus says, what's up, Coach Jake and Roddy? What's, what's going on, Marcus? What's up? <laughs> oh, now we're getting the, the good stuff. Oh, yeah. Holy SEC moly. Championship week. Yeah, SEC <laughs> Championship Week. Got to have the beers in there. From my oh, friends right. over at Academia. God bless those that, people. Here in Champions are going to be great places to watch that game. Absolutely. So. All right. Um, you guys ready? I'm, uh, yeah. Got it. A plus beer going there, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I've been been uh, cultivating it. Looks good. Yeah, launch the other one, please. I just hit it whenever it'll be fine. We're good. Hey, everybody, on the uh, Facebook page and YouTube pages, my name is Roddy DeBulsey. We are now starting the UGA Sports Live podcast from Champions on Back Street, the best place to come and get your the best fried chicken you'll ever have in your life. I have the sausage, uh, cheese, and pickle plate. We've got the catfish plate down there. Got some great beer. It's a Tuesday in December, and Georgia is relevant. They have a game this Saturday. We're going to break down the SEC championship game with former Georgia Bulldog head coach Jim Donnan, and we got a bunch of great recruiting news at UGAsports.com. We have Jake Roos, the recruiting superstar, who dropped crazy notes he and Trent did yesterday on some – Major, uh, that was target. nice to have both of us, uh, with a little little report. It, it's each. amazing what happens when we take pull these guys off of the team beat and put them back <laughs> on the recruiting beat, and all of a sudden, you know. And to be fair, stuff happens when these high school seasons end. A lot of times, there's not a, a lot of news going on, the kids are just going through their daily things, you know, a couple visits here and there. It's decommit season, baby. Yeah, yeah. don't count Kirby out. No, yeah, and we've had some people that you know they they missed on Zacavius Walker, and everyone's all upset, and Kirby's lost his mojo. I'm like, you. Ye of little faith. Man. In December, at, how do you lose your faith in December? Has anybody seen Jalen Carter? I'm just going to tell you right now. Since I've been around here, which hadn't been that long, 1995. <laughs> <laughs> <hadn't been> that <laughs> long. New kid on the block, yes. This guy ranks right up there with anybody we've ever signed in the D-line. Anybody. And, hey, put that on the dog vent and kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how you start a show off. That's right, everybody. Baby. So I, uh, I'm big just telling you now, everybody worried. I'm telling you, we talked about Trayvon Walker last year. This guy is special. I, I mean, completely agree. He is a dominant player. His coach told me I went back to see him uh, back in the spring. Yeah. Uh, went down there, um, and his coach told me. And you know, you wonder about uh, hyperbole and stuff. He said, "I've I had a college coach sitting in here that said, Coach, this guy will be.'" It could be a top ten pick in the NFL draft yeah, as I mean, a he, as a high school as a high school. I always like those junior. guys. That, I mean, he played tight end before. I mean, he, he can move, he can run, he, he can just, punt. He's an athlete. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. He's physical and it's what we need to go with some of these other guys we got. And you know, it's always tough to lose a guy like Zy Walker, but uh, you know, we just hit Auburn at a desperate time. I mean, you know, they were. We didn't know what was going to happen with them, and they got to do what they got to do to get players. Yep. Uh, speaking of doing what you got to do, we got to give a quick shout out to all of our sponsors at UJ Sports. I want to uh, say thank you to Athens Ford, Aaron Overhead Doors, Your Pie Academia Brewing Company, and uh, Cable East. And of course, uh, we're here at Champies. If you're watching the show right now on Facebook, you're watching it on 365 Game Day. Even if it's on a different page, that's where we're originating it from. It is December. Uh, yesterday was Cyber Monday. Uh, 365 game day, they have a store on their site. You can click on it, and you can get all the Georgia gear you need, all your SEC championship gear. You get your Falcons gear. Get it with the, the tons of other gear for your big Georgia fan. It is December, so um, they let us go on their page. They have a lot of fans there, a lot of Georgia fans. So if you would like to support those who support us, hit them up. Also, if you're listening to this show on Tuesday, it ends today. If you're watching it live, we have a Cyber Monday deal at UGAsports.com. It's 50% off, so it's normally 100 bucks. You get it for 50% off. Then you get a $49.95. No, excuse me, $49.50. 50. 
Don't uh, you, be careful with it. Give away our extra, extra forty-five cents. No, you don't get that forty-five cents. Screw you, people. Now you get a forty-nine dollar <laughs> fifty cent gift code to the Fanatic store. So if you want a new Georgia hat, Georgia uh, logo, any uh, Georgia logo shirt, anything like that, you can get that from Fanatic. So basically, your effective cost is forty-five cents for your first year of UGASports.com. That ends Tuesday night at midnight. If you're listening to this on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you missed out. Maybe they'll bring it back. I'm, I'm not going to count on it. So if you've been on the fence about joining UGASports.com to get all the great scoop and get all the great analysis, do it today. Do it, do it before midnight because after that you're kind of screwed. All right, Coach, I want to go back to – before we jump ahead to LSU, I know uh, a lot of people just kind of put the uh, Georgia Tech game out of their mind. but And we, it's a broken record. Georgia wins again. We have some fans that are upset. You win by the biggest margin in With the history. With what? In the – because they're worried about the offense. The offense that scored, what, 45 points? I mean, there was the well, I mean, you, there's you, last minute there's touchdown can, on defense. You but. are what, who you are. I mean, we got some warts. We got some situations there that we got to do better in. That There's no question. But at the same time, set a record for the most points scored. I mean, uh, I mean I've never seen a tech team look as – I mean, they look bad. I mean, I like seeing them in Vanderbilt play – you know, see what would happen. But, I mean, <laughs> but you know, hey, the fans. I mean, that that's why I'm on here to maybe this diffuse some of that stuff here where they're not too. Work. But you know, the reality is, we did we did some bad things. But yeah. let me just point this out. If anybody was watching the pro game the other night when Houston played the Patriots, Tom Brady, the G O A T, he's going crazy about his receivers because they can't dislodged from these guys because he's got a bunch of guys that, you know, he hadn't played with before. And we've got a similar situation there where some of our guys get covered, but we also miss some too. I mean, yeah. you know, early in the game, first three passes, Jake didn't hit. I mean, he threw one behind the first guy, the second guy, and the th- but he's just not quite as uh, accurate sometime as he needs to be. But, you know, big games now, he's always been good, particularly in the first half and particularly in the dome. So, Let's wait and see. I like our matchups, but as far as that game, just point out what they're pissed off about so I can go ahead and <laughs> so I just don't well, – they're pissed off because we weren't beating them bad enough in the first half. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, when you – against a very bad team, it was, what, 17-7 going into the – I will say for the, it to be – And that, that let, let me also add the end of that first half. The two, you had sure. two minutes. Oh, yeah, minutes, sure, sure. So you weren't – Yeah, really, I couldn't I figure out – I mean, I couldn't figure out what we're doing at the end of the first half – I mean, we ran. We had three timeouts and a minute forty-five, and then we let a minute go off before we ran another play. I, I couldn't figure out that, but you know, that's up to them about how they handle that. But at the same time, uh, you know, offense has just had so many stretches where they just shoot blanks, you know, all over the whole season. But uh, it's just hard to believe. But uh, we'll we'll just uh, we didn't have a great first half, no question. It didn't. It was not as pretty of a game as you would expect for what that score was. Fifty-two yeah. to seven. You think, man, everything must have fallen your way. Right. Obviously, there was some collateral damage. The George Pickens suspension, kind of the story of the day. That, yeah. Well, that's that hurt us the first half playing without only not only Pickens but also Cager. Sure. So that's your two big threat guys. I was glad to see us hit Simmons on some things. But if you compare the the seasons, we beat them a lot worse than Clemson did. And everybody's bitching about Lawrence in the first game, the fact that he threw a couple picks against them. You know, he threw two picks against uh, 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 Georgia Tech in the first game. And that's when they broke out the, the fact that they were lifting weights before the game. You better so be. You better we, be. Had, we had time to, to plan for all that weightlifting. And, uh, <laughs> the, you better I'm be just, careful. Dabo will get on you now. Yeah, He'll, uh, Dabo has got a pain. In, he's really got a burr in his saddle. <laughs> Which I can understand to a little bit, but I don't think he's. I think he's really losing a little bit when he does it like that. Because realistically, I mean, more than likely, if we win, which I feel like we got a heck of a shot, we're going to be playing Clemson in the semifinals. And that's a little bit of bulletin board material. You got to think early. Don't on. you think? I, I, I absolutely. I mean, I they're going to have Ohio State one, uh, LSU four, and that's the way it'll be. We'll play Clemson. Maybe uh, it depends on where where Ohio State wants to play. I, I mean, think Ohio they want to go out west. Yeah, I've heard they want that. Well, they well. would go west if they were playing uh, if they were playing LSU. But if they were playing Utah, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, Utah would have a home court there. But hey, I, there's a lot of ifs and whats. But uh, 
Just like if 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 some if bugs were candy and nuts, we'd all have a merry <laughs> Christmas. And I have Santa Claus had balls. I mean, no, we don't. Say. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but to your point, uh, and this is, I guess, I guess if Grandma we, had, <laughs> yeah, okay. we, it was the fear of what Georgia looked like without Lawrence Cager in the first half and George Pickens. The confusion on that final drive there, some three and outs against teams. I don't should... think there was confusion. I just think that was just the way they were playing it. We've done that before. When we've had trouble in the first half and the other team didn't want to give them another possession, that was the way it was. I mean, that's the way we were playing it. it confusion on our end as to seemed, what the hell they were doing. Right. <laughs> I think it they just felt like it didn't, want to, didn't give, any, give them another shot right. at running, getting the, you know, because they hadn't done anything. What they have, 13 three and outs? I believe so. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for them, as Kirby yeah. Smart said. <laughs> <laughs> a new record. A new record. Uh, no, uh, you know, I think that that was the, the problem had people had with it, though, was that it sort of harkened back to some of the, the complaints this year of the conservative play of Kirby Smart and, and James Coley and the play calling, you know, to end the, the half there. It felt like you had an opportunity to maybe widen your lead a little bit if you were aggressive, but instead you choose, like you said, to kind of keep it out of their hands, run the clock out, and then is what it is. Just being devil's advocate, I would think, based on the way all things transpired in the second quarter, the onside kick, the drop punt, all the negative stuff that happened, we didn't want to take a chance on letting them do one more thing and, and put them in the game. That makes so, sense. We felt like we we're a better team than they were. We, you know, we had the whole second half to kick their ass, so we were going to be very conservative and not give them anything. And you were getting the ball to start the right. second so half. Right, so realistically, it's okay. But still, after we'd made a first down, I could see us maybe going, you know, when we had a minute 45. But the, the reality of this team is it's 11-1. and one. It has strengths, good defensive play, good kicking game, good running game, passing game still, you know, has some issues. But – you know, 12 straight victories over your rivals, 11, three straight at SEC East. I mean, you know. These are salad days. I mean. It, it is. And I actually was going to write in my column the same thing that I wrote in week two or three. Enjoy the ride. You're here. Right. It, and the reason a lot of people don't, the reason a lot of people. You could be pissed, at Alabama today. Yeah. yeah. Very true. You could be <laughs> any of the other. Uh, Normally, that would be such a compliment. <laughs> yeah, you could be any of the other twelve teams that are off. They are, are they are they practicing for a game this Saturday? No, they are not. You know, are you? What about any of the other teams that are not being mentioned for the NFL? A lot of, I mean, for the playoffs, a lot of teams are sitting around waiting to see what other teams do to find out where the hell they're going for their crappy bowl game. Yeah. Worst case scenario for Georgia is you have to go back to the Sugar Bowl. Understand this. That is the worst case scenario. Is you have to go to the Sugar Bowl, a game we couldn't sniff for what, a decade. You know, it's it drives you crazy to think about it. But that that happened. And you could probably stand to get a little bit of redemption the there. Yeah. Well, not only that, but it, again, uh, let me cut you off, coaches. The I'm cutting you. I, I, my I, bad. I, I do know that there are there is this group of fans who are diehard Georgia fans, and we love you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not banging on you. You are the reason we have a job. Okay. <laughs> you are the UGA sports diehards. And they said, look, winning the SEC East ain't that big a deal. We've done that. We're capable of that. That's where we are now. We got to win the SEC, and then we got to win a title. Kirby, exactly. Coach Donnan, Coach Rick, Kirby, they've brought this program up from the Ray Goff era to here, and now we are competing for national titles. That's Here's where we're supposed to be. I would make and you haven't done it since 1980, right. and that's thrown in their face, and it makes them so angry. Right, they should it, be. It should be a lot, but the I, only thing that will like, assage them is that getting that title. So it's title or bust, and I understand. Well, let's it. wait till the season's over before you bitch about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. I mean, here's, you're, you're right. right. Here's the reason I say that because our warts are offensive, not being able to put, you know score a lot of points. Alabama. 44 against Clemson, 46 against LSU, 48 against Auburn. The last three top teams have played with that defense. I don't like to rather have a great defense and kicking game and an okay offense compared to uh, throwing all these offensive wizards out there and all that. But I'm going to tell you what, if you got first and goal on the one and you've got Najee Harris and you throw the ball in the flat, you ought to get your ass beat. That was yeah. one of the worst calls I've ever seen. And I like Sark and I like Nick and everything. But you don't run – you run the ball at least twice there, don't you? 
Oh, absolutely. G- give me Najee on the one. <laughs> especially <laughs> when you got, especially <laughs> especially when you've only scored ten points and you've got a, pre- a quarterback as his first start. You're putting all the pressure on him to out execute a defensive end without blocking him, throwing it in the flat. It felt like that Seahawks uh, choice to to throw it at the goal line against yeah, the Pats. I mean, and then they had thirteen penalties. Yeah. I mean, so we don't have those penalties. We don't have those. Well, one of them was unfair, Coach. Come on. <laughs> well, <laughs> come on, Gus. You can't put out that like that. That's not fair to you. But hey, any way you look at it, Gus is two and three, and Dabo's two and three against the dictator. Let me ask you this: uh, Kirby was asked this question yesterday. He gave the standard coach's response. Uh, I don't assume yours will be very different, but I am interested to hear your take on it. The question was: You hear the old adage? Bear Bryant said it: "Defense wins championships." In this era, is that still enough? It's probably not because it's just the game's changed. It's more wide open. It's more the the blocking rules as far as holding on offense. You can hold a lot easier, you know, pass protection wise within the framework of your body. It's just uh, the the hash marks are moved in. You know, uh, it's just a different game uh, than it used to be when Bear was coaching, and uh, it's just a defense certainly gives you a better chance if you don't have. If you got the lesser of two, you'd rather have a better defense. But uh, and in case of LSU, uh, you know their offense is demonstrably better than their defense. I mean, they gave up 38 to, to Vanderbilt. 38 to Vanderbilt. Yeah, and they scored about 50 some. But I just think overall that our team is has achieved about what it was capable of, given the fact we were thrown that little deal where we lost those three receivers coming out and then we lost the fourth one being ineligible I mean getting kicked off so you lose anybody lose four of your top guys coming back it's going to be hard and so I'm not defending anything I think we've won within the framework we got more big wins than anybody in the uh, whole BCS that they'll vote tonight I guess it's not BCS. What do you call it now? College football playoffs? Yes, yeah. My daughter told me I was wrong on that. I'm, it's not BCS. I, I'm in the – I mean, you know. <laughs> You're stuck back go, in 2009, sir. I got to yeah. go back to rest on play bingo at 4 o'clock. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's terrible. But, I mean, the, 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 All, the, folks here, y'all just start shouting out bingo halfway through it. Watch Coach get pissed <clears throat> off. Wait, what? Who, who? But I can't remember half of that stuff. But seriously, for us, though – I told you two weeks ago when we were playing A&M, and A&M got drubbed, there's no question. They got drubbed by – they got kind of a whirlwind and just couldn't get out of it there against uh, – if we could get through that LSU game, I felt like we had a heck – I mean, that A&M game, I felt like we had a heck of a shot against LSU, and I still feel the same. I do think you, we do got – st- Do you still feel the same, though, without Lawrence Cager and without George Pickens in the first half? I don't feel quite as good, but, okay. you know, uh, but I, I would – the up in the air deal is swift, and if, if he's point. not out there, that's going to be a huge difference. Now that's because that's our that's our advantage, our running game against these guys, and our other advantage is running the clock, mm. a la Florida, where Florida didn't run many plays against us. We got to do the same thing with the LSU. We got to keep them off the field, and uh, we do, we're pretty good at doing that. I was it was interesting to see a such an offensive mind. Saying, look, you know, you can score forty something points, but if you don't have the defense to sure. contain it, you lose those games. And yeah, I think uh, in these the two losses that uh, Alabama has, they did score forty something points. Yeah, I believe that know? is correct. So that's a good. Point. I had not thought about which that. is crazy to think yeah. about an Alabama team scoring forty and lo- losing twice. Yeah, uh, it's it's not the same defense, and I, I do think that they miss Kirby and they miss miss Pruitt. Yeah. Uh, and shout out to Dan Lanning for being on the one of the finalists for the Broyles Award. This uh, defense, uh, our guy, uh, the stat guy Dave McMahon, had put up some stats this past uh, weekend in the uh, uh, numbers, and by the numbers, they were just mind boggling at how strong this defense is. Dominant. And I think, to me, the the biggest question will be, what happens if Burrow does hit a couple on them? How do they respond if they're down fourteen, down tw- some? They yeah. they have not been Big down. Question. Before we got a lot of confidence, but, but I'm just going to go back to last year on this show. Let's just go back in time. We're on a time machine, and it's <laughs> it's uh, Mel Tucker just taking the Colorado job, and they're looking at defensive coaches, and 
Everybody's saying, "Well, we got to get some. We got you know, we got to get a defensive coordinator." Now you butt forward. We got to get. We got to get all these guys in there. Blah 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 blah. blah. And I said, I can guarantee you, he's going to make one of the guys on the staff. And it's not because I was right. He's going to make one of the guys on the staff more than likely landing the coordinator because he knows his stuff and bringing a secondary coach. That's what we said. Yep. So all those doubters, I think. Oh, Kirby knew what he was doing here because he Lanning, the thing that he's got is he can communicate to these kids. These kids react to him. He's got some fire in him, his belly, a lot like Kirby, and he does a good job of, of, of uh, handling the room. Those other guys augment him. Scott, uh, Schumann, Warren came in with a little more disciplined, you know, type secondary coach type guy. Man, I mean, that defensive staff is coordinated. They do – you know, we don't see people looking over the sideline and getting guys in the game and doing all that stuff. I mean, we're I mean, we're flat-out nasty defense. You did make a good point during the watch-along, and if you missed that, it was on uh, – you can catch it here on Facebook. We had to do Facebook and not YouTube last week. The watch-along coach was talking about the amount of time they were taking uh, on the clock in the – really the past three weeks. I never realized how much goes into the – play clock countdown and Georgia being able to realize, you know, get in, get into the right set, trick the other team with what they were doing. Uh, I don't remember a lot of plays this year in which there was a busted coverage where you saw a guy running free. And I go back to the spring and summer when you said, look, Georgia secondary is going to be so good this year. It's going to make the entire defense better. And I will admit that I was like, no, eh, that sounds reasonable, but I didn't understand how it would work as, as well as it did. And to your point, you were dead on. This is uh, one of the best defenses Georgia has had ever. So, I mean, again, and it's not, you know, the Seymour Strouds, Roquan Smiths, you know, uh, Champ Bailey's that are lighting it up, you know, the, the big names. It's with a bunch of guys who are going to play in the NFL, but the, the biggest names are actually very young on this staff. So, And we do a really good job of tackling. Yeah. I mean, explosive plays to just start. Now, Saturday – this guy, this guy <laughs> it's a whole walked, different world. Time bomb offense. I mean, it's just like you can hold them, you can hold them. You got to hope for some holding penalties on them, some uh, get get them behind the sticks with a law shortage play. You know, get them out, get them off the field sometime, kind of like uh, Auburn did. You know, they yeah they did a good job of keeping them up, but but Florida didn't. I mean, they ran forty. 46 plays and scored 44 points against Florida. Oof. That, that, damn, that, that's, that's efficient. And uh, that's I, what happened to those other two? <laughs> <laughs> Slacker. That's, that's Burrow, the takeaway. That's, that's Burrow pull it up there. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to our friends at uh, Athens Ford. We'd always talk about the, some of the great deals they have. I do want to mention now that it's uh, Christmas time coming up here. I do want to uh, point out the fact that they have – a show, entire showroom full of bicycles. And when you go out there and you buy a new or pre-owned vehicle, they will take one of those bikes and they will put a child's name on that bike. So if when you go out there and you get a great deal on a new or a pre-owned vehicle from Athens Ford, and of course, if you go to their website, you can get that $500 off coupon for anything. So you can save 500 bucks right off the bat. And then they have great December deals. They're going to push out any 2019s they have. they got great deals on the 2020s coming in, so you can hit up all those. But when you buy a new vehicle out there or a pre-owned one, you are going to be giving a kid a new bicycle, and you'll be able to put your name on it and a big bow out there. They have a, a giant tree out there that's uh, Georgia Bulldog-themed you need to check out. Again, these are huge supporters of the program, a bunch of alumni over there. Uh, that you know went to Georgia and graduated from there, and they are big Georgia fans, and they are big in this community. They do this every year, be it bikes or toys or uh, donations. They give a ton of money that they put back into the community, and our thanks to them for doing that. I've seen, I've gone out there and seen the pictures uh, or posted pictures in years past of just this huge array of bicycles. That's all these kids in the community are going to get these new bikes. So. Really, really uh, proud to be a uh, that they sponsor our show because they're good people. So if you get a chance, you're looking to get something for uh, the holidays, you know, trying to surprise somebody, go out there and check out our friends at Athens Ford. Huge supporters of the program, huge supporters of us, and great supporters of the community. So our thanks to Athens Ford. 
Got some good questions there? Uh, yeah, we've. I'm sorry. I'm uh, trying to confirm some. Uh, what are you confirming? I'm trying to confirm something right here. Uh, we got a little bit of breaking news. Really um, breaking? Yeah. Um, Georgia just picked up uh, another Georgia commit. Just picked up a, his fifth star. Uh, Broderick Jones now uh, jumps into the five-star conversation, and I'm double-checking here. Oh, we, we shouldn't recruit Broderick Jones. He signed too early. <laughs> What's wrong with him? I, uh, I'm that the, guy's a phenom. The other he? one I'm checking on is uh, Rosemey. Uh, it looks like Marcus Rosemey may have added a fifth star. I'm, I'm working to check on that and confirm. That would be fifth? Two I thought he was three. He was. Yeah. <laughs> he's, so, up f- he's already four? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was. Uh, he, you're on mute. I know. So you got he Broderick he Jones. Who else, uh, who else is a five-star O-line? Oh, no, okay, just Broderick. All right, all right. I, I wanted to double-check on that. Um, so, yeah, Broderick Jones adds his. Marcus Roseme nipping at the heels. I mean, he's as close as you can get. It's a, almost <laughs> like the DeAndre Swift situation again. Um, Who's so. making those decisions? Uh, the national guys, not us. Who? What's her num? What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> can you give me some addresses? Here? Yeah, we need to talk to Mike uh, Farrell, please. Um, no, Mike we do Farrell? have a bunch of uh, we do have a bunch of questions. Uh, BSW four four. Where's Mike Farrell? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, come on, Mike, you're easy man. I used to work with you the and I used to know when you had holes in your shoes. <laughs> you take a C note in a New York minute, man. Get that guy's star. Uh, BSW four four one four four on the board wants to know. He says, Coach, do you think they come? Do you think Georgia comes out swinging, or do they try to control the clock and limit LSU's possessions? Well, we're going to take some shots on them because they've they're, they've given up a lot of big plays. Watch the Texas game. I mean, uh, we watched the Texas game uh, early in the year, and I was thinking myself, I've never seen a defense like this at LSU. And then I watched the Vanderbilt game, and I saw the same thing. Uh, Coach Ogeron's done a terrific job with that team and moving, to, you know, to the to the offensive way they're doing things. But defensively, they just don't look like LSU. Kind of like Alabama doesn't look like Alabama. So, uh, and we said this early in the year: the difference in our team in Alabama and LSU is we got better defense. You know, our offense probably n- n- not as effective in the way we do things. But I think we come out and run our offense, control the clock and uh, take some shots and, you know, play action is going to be good against these guys. We can work on their linebackers. They don't have White in there, the guy that won the oh award last God. year. And their safety, Delpit, has been hurt some. They got really good corners, but uh, this will be – this will we'll, we'll, we'll do better on offense than you think, and they'll probably do better on defense than people think. So it'll be – Kind of a back and forth all the way type game. Speaking of back and forth, Rug Slanger over at the uh, dog vent out of Chattanooga, uh, he says uh, Kirby's no stranger to the SEC championship game as this is his third in a row with UGA and several before that with Alabama. This is Coach Orgeron's first appearance in the championship, however. In addition to that dynamic, there's a collision of philosophies with the unstoppable force of LSU's offense meeting the immovable object of uh, UGA's defense. How does championship ex- game experience and a Opposing philosophies impact the outcome of this game. Well, it helps somewhat from Kirk because he's been around this atmosphere. He knows what to, to tell the team to expect over there as far as the different events they got to go to, luncheons, all that stuff. But, you know, Coach Ogeron was a part of a national championship team at Miami and the same way out at USC under Pete Carroll. So he's been around championship programs. And uh, the thing that I like about him is – you know, he, he had that first shot at Ole Miss and it didn't work out, but he was able to uh, understand wh- why it didn't. And when he got the shot at USC, he, he, he used some different techniques than he Did used. Did a great it. job there. And then uh, when he got this job, he just uh, learned how to delegate and really has done just an overwhelming situation down there. And here's the thing. If you look at the trends right now in the SEC, you're, you're looking – Teams that are trending upward would be Florida, Tennessee on our side, and LSU and Texas A&M on the other side, you know, with Auburn and Alabama still being right there. So uh, that's why if you're looking about taking a job, if you take a job in the SEC West right now at Arkansas or uh, or at Ole Miss, I mean, you're starting out sixth or seventh in your division, you know, and with the teams on a nationally ranked, and uh, well, same with Missouri in the East. I mean, you're you're going to yeah, be. Right. I saw somebody say this right off the bat. Says, look, you will immediately have less talent 
pretty much forever yes. compared to three people in your division, not even in right. your conference. You're going to be right. fourth in talent, probably fifth, sixth, or seventh in money, you know, and resources yeah. available to you. Yeah, what you're helps, in the SEC. What but, helps them, though, is their crossover games with Arkansas, and they're fourth – as yeah. whereas Arkansas and Ole Miss are like six or seven, so but I don't think either, any of those jobs right now are what what you know in in our league. But I think you've got to get creative. <clears throat> this is totally apropos of nothing related to the SEC championship. But I did see that report that faked everybody out about Mike Leach going to Ole Miss yesterday, and I thought, man, yeah, that would be cre- that would get creative. On your <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be killer use, for them because he's got a system. I think that I use that you Auburn don't... Auburn recruiting manual. <laughs> <laughs> you take it. Take. I don't have the, many hundreds. But I just bring one every week, just so I can show. <laughs> That's what they use, you know. All right, we got a good question here. Boom, MF or dog uh, over on What's the board. His name? Boom, MF or dog, uh, and it is wow. MF. Yeah. Uh, so he says, uh, "What does Coach Jim Donnan think we need to do to beat LSU? What is his game plan?" I thought we'd do that at the end of the show. But, uh, <laughs> well, let's save it then. Let's no, save it. I'll, 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 let's save it. I'll ask. Most right. people can't make it that far. I'll, I'll answer that MF. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's his name, right? Yes, it is. It, is. it sure is. Um, oh, here's a good one from Jordan jo- Faulkner. Joja Dog. <laughs> Uh, he says, uh, what are some of the favorable matchups on Georgia offense? Dog. From an untrained eye, uh, I think our backs could do some serious damage in the passing game if we can get them matched up with LSU's linebackers. No question. That's something you got to do. You got to not only line them up in the backfield and bring them out, but shift them out like we did against Florida and hope that they put a backer or a jack or strong safety on them and let them work because both Harry and Ann, uh, and Swift are good at that, and, and Cook is too, so – uh, our backs against their their uh, linebackers are good matchups, and you know, uh, jump ball, back shoulder fade. Uh, you know, Simmons is doing a good job on that. If you look at Mo for Jake uh, starting back with Wims, he, that was one of his best throws. Same way to Holloman last year, he likes those boundary throws to uh, to Ridley to, as well. Yeah, yeah. So he can he can do a good job on that, and I think you do that maybe on some waist down, so you don't. So you still got some ability to make first downs on them. You know, don't just always do it when you yeah, – Because Jake was, said yesterday in the teleconference, we've got to win first down. So you're looking at a second and three. Right. Then you can throw that pass, and you still have your, a short third down option yeah. there. So he – to answer to try to answer the question, Jake from himself was big on the first down. He says we've got to yeah. win first down. Uh, you you can't, can't have those waste downs like you point out. I know everybody wants Georgia to come out and – uh, throw the ball on first down, and he's like, ah, we got to well, win. Well, you that. look at Saturday. We threw the ball first three plays on Saturday and then punted yep. against Tech. Yeah. And I was over there grabbing Roddy and saying, what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, the they, going on they here? changed defenses on. <laughs> uh, but, but I think I think uh, I like our matchup against their defense. Uh, now, let's flip the script here. Gary Tommy says, how do you feel about the LSU wide receiver? Receiver matchup against the DBs. They're explosive all around. Is, is the passing game the biggest offensive threat? Yeah, I for think Georgia? in reading, uh, you know, our people do such a good job, Brent Rollins and Dane and everything, l- l- reading about the matchups as far as the targets against our corners, we've held up pretty well. Where we've broken down this year is the inside guys against the uh, slot receivers when they go. And these guys, like we said in the opening, run three and four or five wide receivers. So whether it's uh, you know, Devod Wilson or Webb or Stevenson, whoever's playing these slot guys is going to have to do a better job than they've done all year because they're going to attack them based on percentages. So I'd say that that's a key there, mixing up the way we look. If you watch the uh, game that, that Auburn played against them, they walked into their coverages. They didn't just line up and play something. They moved, tried to confuse old uh, Burrow a little bit. So they used six defensive backs, and they walked into things, and then they figured out that they were doing that and sort of started going on quick count so they couldn't do it anymore. But if you can disguise coverage, it's obviously a, a way to get him to step around in the pocket some and maybe go. But the guy's a brilliant tactician. He's a good, good athlete. Last year they went for it on five times against us on fourth down and made every one of them, several of them were short yardage. 
But the overwhelming thing of that, looking at last year's tape to me and talking to Kirby after the game, was how many complete busts we had. We had a bust between uh, between Campbell and uh, and uh, our, and our our safety. Uh, Coming my twin. Reed or uh, LeCount? Yeah, yeah, Reed was supposed to play the deep outside, and they hit that long ball. We had a short yardage bus where they hit, went off tackle, and, and Burrow ran about 30 yards. So just eliminate the bus, and you got a better shot. We missed two really wide open plays. First pass of the game to Hardeman was six. We overthrew yeah. him. And then in the third quarter, we had something set up on second down, and uh, Hardeman didn't get the signal. And, you know, he's supposed to run a crossing route, and there wasn't anybody there. So, you know, those, those kind of things are big in a game like that. Plus, I think maybe they'll make some mistakes playing. Should be a home game crowd for us. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, no, no question. Maybe, uh, again, I always say that the formula for an upset, special teams, penalties, turnovers. Maybe Georgia actually hit some of those. Georgia has great, good special teams, got good coverage, got good return guys, uh, great kickers. Uh Georgia has not had a lot of turnovers. Speaking to Aziz Ojolari yesterday, he says, we haven't played our best game yet. And I'm like, really? You're holding teams to 10 points a game. What else do you need to do? And without missing a beat, I mean, before I even finished my sentence, he's like, turnovers. We got not getting turnovers. And, I mean, he was adamant about it. So you could tell that in his eyes he's hungry for the turnover. And, you know, hey, maybe Kirby downplayed, going back to one of the earlier questions there about Oh, well, you know, there's no advantage to us having played in the SHC championship game. You know, this is a professional team. There's, there's 20 guys that have never played in it. Yeah, but there's 65 who have. Sure. And consequently, those folks are going to – they've been there. They've and been several of them room. multiple times. Yeah, several of them multiple times. Heck, we had a bunch of kids in there from the Rivals Challenge. They've been inside that stadium, the big giant scoreboard that goes around the ceiling. It's not new to them. You know, they understand the sounds in that place. They understand the sight lines. You don't see Jake Fromm going, where's my play clock? You know, right. He's not understanding, looking around for it. He knows exactly where it is. He's been in that building twice before, third trip. He's familiar with it. Maybe LSU is Actually, he's been there three times already. National Championship uh, yeah, was played there. Four times. So this will be his fourth time going in there. So he's used to that stadium. And this is a situation where he can uh, maybe, it, here's something maybe that, he doesn't jump. You know, maybe something. one of their Georgia guys doesn't jump while one of theirs does. That I asked Dave McMahon to look up for me that, we, that I used uh, – talking to some people 2017 we gave up 19 touchdown passes and had 12 interceptions 18 we gave up 13 td passes and eight interceptions so far this year we've given up 11 td passes and six interceptions so we we've cut down on everything on the touchdowns from 19 to 11 but we we've gone from 12 interceptions to six this year so we we are not a big is there anything you can attribute that to? I mean, is it just teams choosing not to throw against you as no, much? No, I, I think more than anything is just people are uh, are not overwhelmingly behind against us trying to catch up. You know, and they're point. playing. They know that they can't give up anything, so they don't take many chances. When you're really behind, then you throw it. You know, it will. You know what I mean? But we've had three games decided by seven points or less, right? Sure, uh, four. I think before the four games you played against well, the ranked he, teams, you got to count Auburn game. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, Jake. I, got, I thought this might be interesting to you. Check out what our friends at Academia Brewing Company have. Mm. I love it when you call me Big D I P A. I love it. <laughs> a double so, IPA. I'm was always that an down. IPA with a milkshake on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> now the West Coast Classic style, uh, nine point four, tantalizing pine citrus flavor. I love it when you call me Big D I P A. Get so. you a uh, get you a Uber to take out for yeah. that one. <laughs> uh, they just released it 38 minutes ago, so they just put it out there. Uh, I like the uh, picture of Biggie Smalls on the on the uh, front there. So, again, our friends at Academia Brew Company doing amazing work during this holiday season. Of course, great place to stop and watch the game this uh, Saturday at four o'clock. Get a chance, swing out there. They have the huge TV uh, projection TVs. They're listening to us. They're listening to the game. Uh, and dedicated chef, plus a new uh, double IPA. Uh, Got to love it. And uh, if you just check out their their Nitro Stout is also back. If you look, go to their uh, Facebook page and watch that Cascade, you know those guys are making fantastic beer out there. Also, I want to give a big shout-out to our friends at Europi. Uh, next week's show we will do from your Europi location, the original location. Mm. You know, so we'll be doing uh, – we'll be over there. 
I know a lot of you are tired of eating turkey. You've had the turkey sandwich. You've had the turkey gumbo. You've had the turkey. The original one's uh, right across the street there in uh, Alps Shopping Center. Oh, okay. oh, that was the first one, yeah. the one in Alps. Yeah. Huh. So that's good. That's one where we did it before? Yeah, we'll do it. We're going to do it again there next week. Uh, big shout out to uh, Drew French and Natalie having opened 72 locations. They're look, opening more as we speak. So when you get a chance, uh, be sure to swing by your pie. You can get a freshly made pizza. You can get a freshly made sandwich. You can get a freshly made pasta. Freshly made salad. You can get uh, gelato, gelato, however you call it. And, uh, prosciutto. Prosciutto and peaches and uh, <laughs> uh, beer. They do it. They have a great beer selection there. So Yeah, all big, the local taps. So they, do, they go out of their way to make sure that uh, – they support local breweries, so every time you go into one, no matter where it is, it is a great way to find what the local beers are in that town is to swing by whatever your pie is, and they'll say, hey, here, this is being made, brewed here, this is being brewed here. They have them all on tap, so a great place to go. And, again, every time you eat there, you are supporting folks who support the University of Georgia. So if you notice a theme in what we do, you know, again, the guys at Academia, uh, a bunch of folks over there with degrees from Georgia – if you want to sponsor our show or our watch along, like like Leon Farmer and uh, Southeastern Mortgage Solutions, they sponsor our watch along show. Georgia graduates, you know, there's just a theme there. Sure, so absolutely. I'm just saying. So, uh, if you are a Georgia person and you want to sponsor our watch along, let us know. Uh, in, hit another question for us. Well, we got a lot of recruiting questions. Yeah. And we've well, got a lot of recruiting info. It's uh, that time of the year. Yeah, hit it up. certainly is. It certainly is. You um, do that. I'm going I'm I'm to ask you, you real right. quick. What do you think? Do you really think we got a shot at Burton? Yeah, so Jermaine Burton, uh, this was something that we broke last night, uh, Was and I, I hate to give it away here, but uh, Jermaine Burton, we, we, can, we confirmed, did uh, end up making a, a secret trip up to Georgia last week, uh, was on campus for the tech preparation, had a chance to spend some time with some coaches, and if you don't know Jermaine, a uh, four-star wide receiver, originally from the state of Georgia, current LSU commit, and has been for some time, uh, but mentioned to us over the summer he said, you know, growing up, I, I never saw myself playing college football outside of the state of Georgia. Now it's sounding like Georgia's sneaking him in here at the last minute. They know they need receiver help in this class. I think that there's really some smoke going on around this Burton kid. Great. I, it's, Be good. I, you know, hey, uh, we need him. And speedy, how, how good about hands. Arian? Arian Smith, uh, we confirmed yesterday, taking his official visit during the gala weekend. So that's going to be a big weekend, uh, as it usually is. Um, but uh, Arian Smith will be here for it. Um, really like where Georgia stands in this right now. Uh, Florida, the other team to watch. Alabama's in this as well. We get those two. That'll really make yeah, the mouth water. I agree. Um, you know, those are two of the fastest guys in this class. Uh, Smith's a guy who, you know, probably needs to develop maybe a little bit more as a receiver. He's a track guy uh, by trade, and uh, we'll probably try to do both here at, at UGA if he were to select the Bulldogs. Um, but uh, Arian Smith, four-star receiver, one of the fastest men in the nation, and uh, I, I think Georgia in a great How about spot. Ringo? Keely Ringo also going to be here that weekend. Uh, so uh, be looking for that. Key, key visit for him. I would assume she will make Easy that trip. Now. And, no, uh, I'm just saying it's, it's always good when the parents That's right. It. That's right. Come uh, on, Rod. <laughs> Dirt knobber. I, uh, uh, I expect Ringo to be here, and people have had a lot of questions about him, primarily because he hasn't visited Georgia in so long. Hard he has to come made. visit from our, uh, Arizona, That's man. right. It, you know, you may, it's a little easier to make the trip up to Eugene uh, as he's been to Oregon this, this season. Hard to visit. <laughs> but, hey, but seriously about this, though, you're coming through with – tell us about the tight end in Vegas. Yeah, so Darnell Washington, another guy that – four quick ones. You had, to feel, you had to feel good seeing Darnell Washington here for the Texas A&M game if you were the Georgia coaches. That was a surprise visit, not uh, – very – kept under the radar, but when that guy walks out, he's hard to hide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you mistake him for anyone else uh, other than, like, maybe Eric Ebron or another – It's like trying to hide that Tesla – truck right (laughs) (laughs) oh my god look at that thing um yeah so monster darnell washington i still feel really good about where georgia stands with him they have preached to him what a need he is in this class uh two tight ends the the ideal situation don't write off theo johnson yet either i'm i know hardly went to see him after the game yeah on last sunday and uh, basic canadian trip he's a he's a guy that um you know theo's a kid that i think him delaying his decision like he did I think George was the biggest benefactor of that because it looked all Penn State. I still yeah. think Penn State's the team to beat, but 
him pumping the brakes on that gave Georgia more time to, to kind of get their message in. Yeah, Obviously, hot, they hot, did. Hot, they get up there, yeah. And um, I, I think that it, it paid off for them. So All right, how many, watch those how many guys. guys do you think we can bring in at semester? Oh, at semester, I think that – they're probably going to shoot for it. Well, a couple of guys you know for sure are not going to. Uh, Broderick Jones, for example, is not coming in as a mid-year guy. Uh, Arian Smith is not coming in as a mid-year guy if he comes. Um, Braun for sure, right? I'm sorry? I think Braun's coming in at semester, isn't he? Uh, yes. Yeah, he's coming in uh, midway through. My guess is you'll see, I don't know, eight, eight yeah. maybe. You know, I like old uh, – Frank Howard said, we have heard from a reliable source that it's going to be a lot more than we think. I, I would believe it. It's like you've, over 10. You've seen. Really? Well, you've seen how it's paid off. And I think oh, Georgia. I agree. I, you I just, know what I'm saying? Uh, Georgia coaches, there's well, a very It depends clear, on how many guys we lose. Right. How many yeah. transfer. How many guys go to the pros. It's just a balancing act. But I've heard that, you know, it's going to be more than you think. Now, I don't know that. For a fact, if I did, I would. So I was thinking like six, but that's uh, that's impressive. I would say over under ten or eleven. Wow. Yeah, and you could be right either way. Yeah, I, I think that it's uh, uh, the the benefits are so clear. Um, exactly. Georgia, those system, those guys who've come in and been a part of that system, it's paid off in such big ways for them. Uh, Darius twenty seventeen here. Uh, moving on from some of the recruiting talk, he says, "How many juniors? Speaking of, uh, you know, how many guys leaving? He says, how many juniors leave early for the draft this year? He said, my guess is five, maybe six. Andrew Thomas, DeAndre Swift, Isaiah Wilson, Richard LeCount, Monty Rice, and maybe Jake Fromm. Yeah, I say the first three, pretty good shot. I don't, I don't see LeCount. I mean, he's he's capable. I, he loves being here. I don't see him leaving. Uh, you know he's a good player, but I don't I don't know how high he's right. I don't chance I don't, to boost his stock. Next yeah, I don't year. know. I think he only helps himself. Uh, Molly Rice, same. It's had a good year, but I mean this is his first year. We a lot of tape on him. I think you know there's a lot of guys his size and around there. I mean, I could see him coming back too. And then of course, the sixty four thousand dollar question: What's Jake going to do? And uh, that that one to me is more up in the air than the other. And you know Isaiah Wilson. Probably, I mean, hard not for him to go. I sure. mean, right. with we look at the he he would he would look enjoy at the coming back. Look at the me. measurables on this guy. Yeah, what do, you, do you think I the mean, NFL is going to be like? Nah, we don't. When you watch you. pro <laughs> football, <laughs> when you watch a pro football game, he looks like a pro tackle. Yeah, no question I mean, about it. He did he, his first day on campus, and he can he can really be a you know dominant player up there. I mean, you. You get guys like he and uh, – and I mean, I saw where they had Andrew uh, picked as the third guy. I mean, th- third guy in the draft? Yeah. So, I definitely see Andrew Thomas going in. Everybody knows it. He's not shy about it. Uh, he, he hasn't said it, but he's – I think – Isaiah Wilson loves what he does. He loves being at Georgia. He loves being part of the team. But he's got to make a, a smart decision for himself. If he's uh, projected in the first or second round, Kirby's going to tell him to go. We've seen Kirby do that in the past. When you get to Richard LeCount, he could – Richard LeCount is maybe, what, fourth to seventh round draft pick. He could move <laughs> up. Sure. Monty Rice, fifth to seventh round draft pick, if that. Uh, he could move up a lot more. In other words, those two guys could do wonders for their stock coming back a second year. Jake Fromm, I mean, at first eight games or something, he's hitting 70% of his passes. He well, looks like, you know, he's ready for the NFL. Last four games, not as much. Well, and I go back to also, you know <laughs> – how does Tua factor in now with the injury? Burrow obviously is going to be a guy top the board, and then you've got your unknowns like your Daniel Joneses who emerged last year, like a kid like Jordan Love out of Utah yeah. State. Well, you got Herbert. I mean, he's and Herbert, go, he's going to go big. How do they? How do they value some of these lesser known guys uh, the as well? Kid from Wake Forest is going to slip in there. That's too. true. That's true. How does Jacob Eason go? Maybe, maybe. Especially with a coaching change, you know. Well, Eason um, can come back as a graduate transfer. We'll bring him back. <laughs> you know, when you look at at the, at the college scenario here in the last three years bob stoops 55 urban meyer and now chris peterson you know the rat race got to these guys i mean it's just had no reason to think that they were going to retire and good gracious that was just well urban may not for much longer well you know and and stoops is going to coach xfl but uh and we got some coaching news too. I mean, you got the situation here, and going to affect us. Who are they going to get at Florida State? 
if they get that Norvell guy from Memphis, I think that hurts us because I think he'll really recruit Florida a lot better than what's been recruited down there, a lot like what Jimbo did. And supposedly he's the guy that they're going after. And uh, whether he'll try to hire some uh, Dan Lanning, I wouldn't think Dan would go from here to Florida State. But uh, I bet I bet he tries to recruit him, though. You know, he's, hey, he's his own Maybe guy. give him an assistant head coach title. There, there's uh, it's a better uh, one of those directional there. Florida teams is looking at James Coley. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, USF, I think USF is going to probably go after Scott from uh, Clemson because – the AD there was assistant AD at Clemson a couple of years ago. Sense. So uh, they said Willie Taggart's interested again. Well, Willie's interested in anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's got eighteen million interest. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, uh, we'll take a quick break from the coaching talk here. Give a big shout out to our friends at Aaron Overhead Doors, uh, Ryan Lucia, the big Georgia fan out there. Uh, I was on his Facebook page the other day, and he showed this uh, frameless glass garage door. It's black. You don't see you don't see the frame parts of it. It's lights out. I know it sounds weird to talk about. Hey, there's cool stuff in the garage door world, but considering it's such a big part of your house and the the actual when you drive up to someone's house and the garage door they have, if it's an ugly ass door, then you got an ugly ass house. I mean, it's, it's, it's <laughs> the the the, the science there isn't the science there isn't complicated. <laughs> so uh, point you know, for the guys that aired overhead doors when they do a, uh, when they put in these custom things that you need done. Like they did for a couple of restaurants that want to have a, you know, want to open it up during the spring, the nice weather. They can put those in for you, uh, but they can do a great job on your house. So, if whatever you can imagine for your house, those guys can do, and it will actually be employees from Aaron Overhead Doors. And I also want to give them a shout out because this is the time of year where they go to somebody who is underprivileged, who needs help, uh, that they know in that community, and they do work for them for free to help bring them. Um, to fix issues that they have. I don't know of a lot of companies that say, hey, we're going to go do some work uh, for somebody that we don't really know that well. You know, we're going to do it for free just because it's this time of year. But the folks there and overhead doors do, and that's uh, and they don't they don't talk about it. They don't put it up on their Facebook page. They don't say, hey, look at us. A lot of people like to be seen doing charity work. These guys don't. I had to drag it out of them. I'm, every time I mention it, he kind of rolls his eyes. Uh, but uh, thanks to Ryan Lucy and the folks that, Aaron Overhead Doors for taking care of members of their community. Good man. It, 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 it means a lot. Loyal. And I'm, it, a, I'm just going to ask you this one thing here, just to put the old coach, because you always produce the show. How about if you give me 90 seconds on the clock, and I'm going to put the Roostmeister through a 90-second recruiting deal here. All right, you got, let's you got go. to go quick now. All right, let's I'm, go. I got so many questions. That we're going to, all the fans out there, we got 90 seconds. Okay, tell let's us go. when we can start. Count all me right. down. All right, start now. All right, how many – Recruits can we take? Uh, my, my guess will be right around 23 to 24. Will we take another running back? Uh, possible, not for sure. Who would that be? My guess is right now uh, they're still recruiting Tank Bigsby very hard. Uh, look for Don Chaney as well, Marshawn Lloyd, maybe now back in the fold with uh, Brian McClendon being dismissed from South Carolina. Well, was he dismissed or just demoted? demoted. Well, demoted, okay. But they're going to keep the other guy, right? Uh, running yes. back Brown. All right, you got to stay quick for the 90 seconds. <laughs> All right, here's the deal here. What do you what do you seconds. think about how many guys, uh, how many other linebackers will we take? I think that they would love to take maybe two more, but it may be just one, and it may just be the outside linebacker in uh, Jordan Birch. Uh, now, they may push for a second guy, but love I think with Sewell going on. You know, there's on. been some talk about the uh, Jervon. How do you pronounce his name? Uh, gr- uh Jervon, Jervon Jerv- Dexter, Jervon Dexter down there at Florida. Uh, their commit that might Georgia might slip in there. What do you think? Well, he visited maybe last week. We haven't fully confirmed that, but there was a rumor that he did. I don't really think Georgia's going to be able to pull it off. Uh, it'll be close though. Uh, they're going to push hard for him. All right. How about in the secondary? Anybody else you think? How do we look with Henderson? Some guys like that. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Dante Manning for sure out of Raytown, Missouri. Definitely a guy Raytown. to watch. Is that Raytown South or Raytown regular? Uh, Raytown regular. And then uh, you've also got uh, Eric Reed, a guy to watch now for sure. Uh, old former Ole Miss commit decided to open things up last and night. Where is he from? He is from uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. So good, uh, very good. familiar That's with 90 seconds. the. Uh, That's some pretty good stuff. All right. There. <laughs> Hey, you, let's never do that. Hey, again. This is why I pay him a whole nickel. Hey, but, a month. But I mean, that he earned his. I mean, I did, but the, we got a lot of stuff in there, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, Caleb Hartu uh, wants to know about Jordan Birch. He says, "Will Jordan Birch be there uh, for the official visit weekend?" Uh, 
uh, that gala weekend, uh, unconfirmed at this point. Birch going to keep Jordan everything. <laughs> <laughs> going to keep Ronnie, everything under. Jordan Birch. <laughs> uh, going to keep everything get under. Get the piles oh, out. Me, hey, let me get mine. Yeah. Uh, he has get visited. champies, man. Caleb, <laughs> Everybody pass up these hundreds. We need them. Caleb uh, points out Birch has visited UGA a lot. He definitely has. I don't know if he'll be back for that one, uh, but definitely one to watch there. Uh, I, I completely If for agree. some reason we wouldn't get – Either one of those tight ends. Do you think we go back on that guy that committed to Oklahoma? I definitely think so. In fact, I wrote about him yesterday night. I think that he's a guy who stays in the mix. Very athletic kid, good hands. Uh, you know, one of those From guys Texas. that you can split out. Yep, uh, Irving, Texas, formerly of St. Louis, Michael Henderson. So uh, definitely keep an eye on him as well. Well, how about the the thing that that the coaches are undergoing right now, having to recruit and get ready for the game. So it's not uh, an enviable position. So a lot of these guys are having to coach all day, watch the tape, and then after practice go out and go for home visits. Is that what they do? Yeah, it's tough, man. It's really it's a it's a tough balance to strike for sure. I don't much rather be doing that and sitting at home though, wouldn't uh, you? Ronnie? Yeah, I think well, it's a little that, easier. You know, sell. when you tell the kid, "Hey, I just left practice," because we're practicing, <laughs> we're playing, we're playing for a title. Oh, and you had the guys in here from uh, South Carolina. What are they doing? Oh, they're changing coaches? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. That's cute. Like Kirby said, you know, hey, what do you think of uh, the 13 punts? Eh, good for them. You know, he's, you, you, could be, you don't have to take a shot at your, uh, your cohorts, your competitors in the business. He but said you can. good for them. Yeah, when asked about tech punt 13 times. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Well, he's glad that they, they set a new record. He was, <laughs> he was quite pleased to have helped them with that. Uh, especially from a defensive guy, you can just see him grin. You know, the I the, de- the I deadpan I... delivery sold it. I did, one of the things that really chaps my ass about losing a tech like I did three times is I can't bust them because they they beat me three times. So I, I'd like to. Well, they you know, had help, coach. I know, but it's just <laughs> really chaps my ass because I could really throw some stuff at them today about what well, you, what I'm. But you know, you can go ahead, and this is the thing. Not really. No, you can't. you can't. No, it's you hard can't. To throw shade I will on argue somebody. with this till the end of the days because this is my one of my number. One pet peeves when it comes to and it goes back to it goes to the the nineteen eighty thing. Okay, when Georgia fan is arguing with South Carolina fan, and South Carolina fan is like, "Well, we beat you this year. Congratulations. What are you doing this week?" You know, and just because they're your rivals, you can't go back to something that happened. Time you were in an SEC championship. All right, let's go. Last time you did anything. So the point being, give them all the hell you want, coach. Yeah, I like to give them, but let me just tell you this. They just got beat tonight. We're going to see Ohio State one. They might move LSU back up, but Ohio State one, LSU two, Clemson three, Georgia four, and probably Oklahoma five. Maybe Utah five. And who the would other you put be, there? Only I, I know who. I know who. No, you it want. doesn't have anything to do with those. Oklahoma's had more good wins than it's they true. have. I was going to agree. And, with uh, they're set to beat Bay. If they can beat Baylor, you know they're going to have Baylor seven tomorrow. Wow. Tonight. So Baylor will be seven, Utah or Oklahoma will be five or six. Somebody needs some four. Florida's to... gonna be in the top ten. The Again, I know mean, Coach Mullen gonna be talking about it, you know. I mean All right. Let's talk game plan. <laughs> of course he will be. Let's talk game plan. How do you attack LSU, Coach? Well, I think the first thing you gotta do is make sure that you control the ball and limit the number of snaps they have. I mean the more burrows on the bench, the better we're gonna be. Uh, I feel like we can really attack the perimeter on them, you know, get the ball outside with Swift. Hopefully he's full speed and uh, hit hit the play action passes on these linebackers. Uh, stress the kicking game. One out of every six plays in the game's a kick. We got to get the hidden yardage on return game and, and coverage. Make sure when they go, they got to go 80, 90 yards and not 40 or 50 because they're a four down team. I mean, you can't stop them when they got four downs. I mean, they just too good. Then defensively, mix up your coverages. Mix up. You're not going to get to this guy. He catches it and throws If you just watch a film of him or watch a tape, look how many times his pictures with his hands not on the laces. That just goes to show you that he catches it and throws it. He doesn't worry about getting the laces. He just catches and gets rid of it. And it's hard to rush a guy like that. So don't get frustrated as fans that we're not rushing him. What we got to do is, you know, mix it up and get some vertical pressure and make him adjust a little bit and take away that first read and then make him go the second one, then maybe we can knock him around a little bit. He's a tremendous player. He's hitting 79% of his passes. But remember this, 
Tiger Woods doesn't shoot a 68 every time. This guy's about 12 months pregnant for getting something happening to him bad. I mean, he's on the Disney World cruise. Everything's going great. We got to get him, you know, get those fans in there. Maybe he'll throw throw something, you know. Remember Serge Bupka? He couldn't get over the bar when he had to in the, in the Olympics. Yep. And maybe we can Serge Bupka this guy. <laughs> what, it, do you feel – the same is true for Jake Fromm in the opposite, that yeah, not think, a lot of things have gone Jake's yeah, way I lately. I think Jake, um, you know, we talked about how good he played against Florida coming off some bad situations twice in a row off the LSU game two years ago and then this year uh, after uh, not doing that great against South Carolina or Kentucky. I just think he, his knowledge of the game is going to help him and in, in, uh, the fact that he, he likes the speed of the game on turfs a little faster. You know, receivers can get open. Uh, I just feel like he going to be able to do more things than people give him credit for. And our offensive line, when it all comes down, push comes to shove, is a big advantage in this game. I think we can Burma Road these guys. That's going to be when you say attack them. I'm like, I know people don't want to hear it, but you're going to run. And you're gonna run between the tackles sometimes. And don't get mad when we're running it a lot because that's every time, you. every every minute we keep the ball, that's one more minute that Burrow doesn't have it. And you know, I just think the overwhelming thing about this game is when the line came out. The reality is this: that Georgia defense means something to those people in Vegas. When you know this team's leading the, everybody scoring points. They scored 50 last week. They're a six-point favorite over Georgia. That shows a lot about our defense. Um, all right. Roddy, mouthwater and player of the week. Who's got to step up for Georgia to pull this one off? I'm going to go with Jake Fromm. I mean, this guy has to keep his offense on the field. Old. I think he will. He always comes up with the uh, – uh, in the big games, he shows out. I think this is a situation where they're going to dare you to run the ball. They're going to be in there. They know you don't have great receivers in the first half. You're going to see single coverages on the edges. And they're, all these guys are going to be in the middle. And I think that that crazy SOB is going to tuck and run the ball. And I guarantee you, you're going to see Jake Fromm running down the field, holding the ball because everything else was taken away from him. Did you – I mean, you got to think, too. That's he wants to – Mockingbird going out on a limb. Nah, I'm just saying. <laughs> you got to think that he wants to wash he's, the he's taste not, out from last year, too. That true. I'm just saying that there's going to be a situation where we see him roll out or something like that, and all of a sudden yeah, he's like, you know. Few, make a few of those, but – Coach. Who else you got? Well, I'm going to go. Uh, there's really two names that jump off the board to me. And uh, the first one's Eric Stokes. I think that taking Jamar Chase out of this game is a very key point. Uh, Impossible, but I, yeah. I agree. And so that's uh, why you put your best guy on him and you true. just say, hey, you're out on the island. Let's go. Hey, Eric, you want to be in the NFL? Cover him. Yeah, right. Uh, the other guy, I think, is also a defender, and that's Monty Rice. I think that this plays really well into Monty's skill set. Uh, they're going to, like you said, be throwing quick. Uh, that's going to be a sideline-to-sideline -side game for him. Plus, you got a great back in Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Uh, I think Monty's going to be a tackling machine on Saturday. He's going to have to when you think about the fact that somebody's got to keep an eye on Burrow because when they run that empty uh, set, as Coach pointed out, if they're all covered, he takes off. Is that and Monty Rice's sure. guy or is that Tay Crowder's guy? He doesn't go down easy either. But, no. um, you know, I, I would say to me is just playing with not necessarily mouth-watering player. I'm just going to say avoid the mistakes that haunted us last year. If we'll, if we'll just play a mentally sharp game, we got a heck of a shot against these guys. If we make the mental mistakes and the busts we made against LSU last year trying to do too much, it, it'll be deadly against us. So – Play within yourself and play with poise and confidence and not make mistakes that just haunted us last year. And hope that the crowd is as loud as I think it'll be and they get some penalties to uh, make, make it harder for them to make first downs. Uh, LSU fans do travel. Yep. But Georgia's got a lot shorter drive. That's true. This is going to be a home team. I've seen yeah. the uh, – uh, the way the tickets are going. Well, here's what a lot happened. of Georgia fans are buying those. The LSU fans are holding on their money because they know they're in the playoffs. Well, here's the so thing about it, too, to explain it. You know, you got an allotment for Georgia and an allotment for LSU, but anything in between, more likely Georgia's going to scoff up, right? They, and they have been. The, the, the numbers I've seen, a lot of Georgia fans think that this may be the biggest game of the season. They think, hey, we may lose this one. Uh, we might not be in the playoffs. Sure. You know, so – a lot of money they were holding back to go to the playoffs are going towards these tickets. So uh, they're going to be there. And, again, I'm not saying that Jake Fromm is going to take off and be a Joe Burrow. He's going to get 87 yards. But I think there will be some situations where he's like, 
this kid is bloody determined to win. Yeah, there's and a lot he, of pride. He, he might not. Pride, exactly. This kid. For our defense against their offense, for Joe Burrow against uh, Fromm, uh, yeah. for Swift against their back, I mean, there's – there's some matchups here, you know what I mean? We do our predictions on Friday. Coach, do you want to do a prediction? I'm not in the predicting <laughs> mode here. But, uh, I did tell you two weeks ago on this that I thought we had a heck of a shot, and I feel even more James Brown about this. I feel good about it. There you go. All, hey, all right. right, all right. That, that's as good nice. as you could hope for. <laughs> hey, folks, uh, that's all the time we have for this week's show. It went a little long, but, of course, it's it's a big week. And, you know, again, we're talking about a game that George is playing in while 12 other SEC teams are sitting at home uh, – eating leftover uh, turkey. Uh, when you watch the game this Saturday, be sure to swing by Champions on Baxter Street. You can get this great catfish plate. You can get the uh, sausage. You can't get the sausage anywhere else. Trust me, it's the best sausage you've ever had in your life. So swing by here, pick it up. Or you can swing by um, Athens Ford this weekend, get your new car. Call Aaron Overhead Doors. They'll take care of you if you need some work done in your house. Uh, swing by Your Pie or Academia Brewing Company. They'll, they'll all have the game on, and you can uh, check them out. And, of course, big shout-out to uh, 365 Game Day for letting us be on their page. And, of course, 11 Alive, who we will work with those guys in the Georgia Dome, or Georgia Dome, in Mercedes-Benz uh, this coming Saturday. We will talk to you later.